Hello friends, welcome to the tutorial series on basic electronics in which we'll see phase lock loop. In this tutorial, we'll focus block diagram of PLL, its explanation and working, concept of lock range and capture range, characteristics of PLL, analog phase detector and digital phase detector and applications of PLL. PLL or phase lock loop is a control system that generates an output signal whose phase is related to the phase of input signal if PLL is used for frequency control. Due to the advancement in the field of integrated circuits, PLL has become one of the main building blocks in the electronics technology. In present, the PLL is available as a single IC in the NE560 series. The PLL works on the frequencies. Two frequencies are compared and adjusted through feedback loops until the output frequency equals the input frequency. Thus, PLL works in three stages, free running, capture and phase lock. The PLL consists of three basic blocks such as phase detector, low pass filter and voltage control oscillator. Let's see individual block in brief. As name suggests, phase detector detects the phase of signal with respect to reference and produces the output proportional to the phase difference. If phase difference remains constant, then frequencies of two signals match with each other. Voltage control oscillator. It is an oscillator whose output can be varied over a range. It is controlled by input DC voltage. By varying DC voltage, output frequency of the signal produced is adjusted. LM566 is a general purpose VCO which generates square wave and triangular waveforms. The third component is low pass filter. It is a simple RC network. It determines loop stability. It removes high frequency components in the output of phase detector and it also removes high frequency noise and produces a steady DC level. This is the block diagram of PLL containing three basic blocks. This output is fed back to phase detector through feedback path. The input signal V in which with an input frequency omega in is passed through a phase detector. The phase detector compares the phase of incoming signal V in against the phase of VCO output V out and develops a voltage VD proportional to the phase difference. This voltage is then sent through a low pass filter This low pass filter suppresses the high frequency ripple and noise and the result called error voltage VE is applied to the control input of voltage control oscillator VCO to adjust its frequency. The VCO is designed such that with V equal to 0 it is oscillating at some initial frequency omega 0 which is called as free running frequency. So its characteristic is omega out is equal to omega 0 plus k0 into v of t where k0 is, is sensitivity of VCO which is in radians per second per hold. 
if a periodic input is applied to the PLL with frequency omega n sufficiently close to the free running frequency omega 0 and error voltage VE de will develop which uh, will adjust omega out until V out becomes synchronized with V in that is for every input cycle there is one and only one VCO cycle. At this point the PLL is said to be locked on the incoming signal and it gives omega out is equal to omega in exactly. When omega in changes the phase shift between uh, V out and uh, V in will start to increase changing VD output of phase detector and hence the control voltage VE which is DC. Um, this change in VE is designed to adjust VCO until omega out is brought back to same value as omega in. This self adjusting ability by feedback loop allows PLL once locked to the to track input frequency changes. A noisy input will generally cause the phase detector output BD to jitter around some average value. If the filter cutoff frequency is low enough to suppress this jitter, VE will emerge as a clean signal, in turn resulting in a stable VCO frequency and phase. Thus, we use omega out output of PLL whenever we wish to recover a signal buried in noise and also in frequency related applications such as frequency synthesis and synchronization. Similarly, we use VE as the output of PLL whenever we wish to detect changes in omega in as in FM and FSK demodulation. Since a change in omega in is ultimately reflected by change in omega e. Now let's see the concepts of lock range and capture range. The phase difference output contains sum and difference of frequencies omega i plus minus omega 0. When the loop is locked, sum is twice omega in as omega in is equal to omega out and difference is equal to 0 or DC. The low pass filter suppresses the sum but passes the DC component which keeps the loop in lock. If the PLL is not locked and if difference frequency falls above the cutoff frequency of filter, it will be suppressed along with the sum frequency which is equal to 2 omega input, leaving the loop unlocked and oscillating at its free running frequency. But if omega out is sufficiently close to omega input to make the difference frequency approach, the, approach to the filter band edge, part of this component is passed tending to drive v omega out towards omega in. As the difference omega out minus omega input is reduced, more error signal is transmitted to the VCO, resulting in PLL to be locked. Lock range, it is the range of frequencies centered about omega zero, which is free running frequency over which the loop can track the input once lock has been established. That is the range of frequencies from omega minimum to omega maximum where the locked PLL remains in locked condition. If the PLL is initially locked and uh, if omega input is less than omega minimum or omega input is greater than omega maximum then PLL becomes unlocked that is omega input is not equal to omega output. 
When PLL is unlocked, VCO out oscillates at frequency omega zero, which is called as free running frequency of VCO. Now let's see capture range. The capture range can uh, it is the range of frequencies centered about free running frequency omega zero over which loop over which loop can acquire log. That is the log can be established again if the incoming signal frequency omega in gets close enough to range of frequencies omega 0 minus omega c to omega 0 plus omega c that is these are two frequencies this is omega 0 minus omega c and uh, this is omega 0 plus omega c this range is affected by filter characteristics and gives an indication of how close omega in must be to v out to acquire log at a certain point that is at this point if we trace this path at this point vco swing has become just sufficient to capture omega in at which point it will jump at which point it will jump then it can be said like it is captured we may consider two sides uh, this is one side and this is another side of traversing which together forms capture range this is the capture range which is obviously smaller than lock range now let's see some characteristics of pll pulling time which is also called as capture time it is the time taken for a pll to capture the incoming signal this time depends upon initial frequency and phase differences between v input and v output filter and other loop characteristics bandwidth is the second characteristics uh, characteristic and uh, it has the following effects if it is reduced uh, the capture process becomes slower capture range decreases pull in time increases and uh, interference rejection capabilities of loop increases now let's see the types of phase detector phase detector is designed to be driven by analog signals or square wave signals and produces an output pulse at different frequency as we uh, studied or as we seen earlier this analog phase detector needs to compute the phase difference of its two input signals let's consider alpha is the phase of first input and beta be the phase of second input the actual inputs to phase detector will not be alpha and beta but uh, will be sine alpha and cos beta computing phase difference would involve computing the arc sine and arc cosine of each normalized input and doing a subtraction such a difficult calculations can be simplified by using some approximations so assume that small phase difference and uh, by assuming by using small angle approximation for sine function and sine angle addition formula which yields the phase difference alpha minus beta which is equal to sine of this angle phase difference alpha minus beta is given by the mathematical identity sine of alpha into cos beta minus cos alpha into sine of beta this expression suggests that two multipliers and one adder is needed which forms a quadrature phase detector instead of using two multipliers a more common phase detector uses a single multiplier 
and a different trigonometric identity as such sin alpha into cos beta is equal to sin of alpha minus beta that is phase difference whole divided by 2 plus sin alpha plus beta whole divided by 2 which can be approximate as alpha minus beta which is phase difference divided by 2 plus sin alpha plus beta sin of alpha plus beta and whole divided by 2. The first term this first term provides desired phase difference and the second term is a sinusoid at twice the reference frequency so it can be filtered out. Now let's see another phase detector that is digital phase detector. For square wave signals that is digital signals, digital phase detector is used. It can be made from an exclusive OR that is XOR logic gate. As its truth table here suggests for equal inputs, XOR gives zero output. For equal inputs, XOR gives zero output. When two signals differ in phase by one degree, the XOR gate's output will be high for 1 by 8, 180th of each cycle. That is the fraction of a cycle during which two signals differ in value. Applying the XOR gate's output to a low pass filter results in an analog voltage that is proportional to the phase difference between the two signals. Here you can see this is the first input and this is the second input which is XOR and we get this pulse for uh, varying for different phase that is for this inst particular instance V1 is high and V2 is low so we get high voltage high output otherwise we get low output so this is all about digital phase detector now let's see the applications of PLL where it is used PLL that is phase lock phase lock loops are widely used for synchronization purpose for example in bit synchronization symbol synchronization it is also used in recovery of a small signals that otherwise would be lost in noise PLL is also used in demodulation of both FM and M signals this is amplitude modulated signal and this is frequency modulated signal by using PLL we can demodulate both the signals another application is in radio transmitters a PLL is used to synthesize new frequencies which are a multiple of a re reference frequency with the same stability as the reference frequency where radio transmitter is an electronic device which when connected to an antenna produces an electromagnetic signal such as in radio and television in space communication also PLL is used for coherent demodulation and threshold expansion uh, threshold extension In clock multiplass, uh, which is used in microprocessors that allow internal processor elements to run faster than external connections while maintaining precise timing relationships, PLL are most useful. PLL are also used in tone de decoders. It is also used in DC motor drive.
this is all about PLL, its working, its characteristics and its applications. Please like us on www.facebook.com slash WCES Elisa. For any suggestions or for any queries, please visit our site walchan.elisa at gmail.com. Thank you friends.